ta ta today I will talk about XRP and the AMMs again that are uh, trying to be passed with the XLS 30D amendment. Uh, XRP Crow has uh, put out some really good infographics about the AMM itself. And uh, I did a video um, a few d d d d days ago uh, that went through another one of his about the XRPL AMM. But I also found some more information that uh, ties in t t to this and the importance and um, some uh, thoughts on liquidity from David Schwartz himself. So if we go through this, um, the XLS 30 AMM amendment proposed by Ripple X has generated significant interest among the XRPL community. Here are some of the most frequently asked questions regarding this amendment. What is AMM? Audited, automated Market Maker is a smart contract that provides liquidity in the XRPL's decentralized exchange. Each AMM holds a pool of two assets and enables users to swap between them at an exchange rate set by a formula. What is the XLS 30D amendment? The XLS 30D AMM amendment is a proposed change to the XRPL that would introduce native AMM functionality to the XRPL. It aims to provide increased returns to liquidity providers and reduce the risk of losses due to volatility. What is a liquidity pool? A liquidity pool automates the buying and selling of assets. This eliminates the need for manual market makers, thereby simplifying the entire process of liquidity management. What are the benefits of the XRPL AMM? Increased liquidity for XRP and other XRPL assets, which can lead to more efficient markets and better price stability, STs. Uh, improved price discovery for XRPL assets, allowing for more accurate and fair market prices, reduced transaction fees for XRPL assets, and increased flexibility for developers to create new AMM-based applications, improving innovation, and expanding the XRPL's capabilities. What are the concerns about the XLS30 AMM? The potential for increased market volatility, concerns about potential manipulations by attackers like front running, fear of AMMs leading to control or centralization over the XRPL. The Ripple X team believes AMM won't harm consensus performance, but concerns from uh, the people who are actually v voting on this per per persist and a uh, third party actually audited it, but security remains one of the top community c c concerns. How does the AMM work on the XRPL? The AMM holds a pool of two assets and allows users to trade between them. The exchange rate adjusts based on the balance of assets in the pool and a trading fee is charged on top of the exchange rate. What are LP tokens in the context of XRPL's AMM? LP tokens are tokens that liquidity providers receive when they deposit assets into an AMM. These tokens represent a share of the assets in the AMM's pool and can be redeemed for a proportional amount of the pool's assets, including collected fees. What new features does the XLS 30D amendment bring to AMMs on the XRPL? Uh, the XLS 30D amendment introduces new transaction types, such as AMM deposit and AMM withdrawal, the ability to vote on trading fees, and a continuous auction for improved arbitrage. Each AMM holds a pool of two assets and enables 
users to swap between them at an exchange rate set by a f f formula. Um, what is the current, uh, I won't say STs, of the XLS 30D AMM amendment? It is currently in the d development phase and remains inactive as of December 7th, 2023. The amendment process follows a specific protocol and if an amendment receives more than 80% support for two weeks, the amendment passes and the change applies per 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 permanently. Um, if approved, the amendment could be implemented as early as the first quarter of 2024 and uh, we're not there yet. So um, I ha have explained this part in the past, but for example, an AMM LP could be between Hologenic and, and XRP, and uh, those would be tr traded against each other. Um, and uh, the trader would uh, pay tr trading fees and uh, would receive uh, t t t tokens in the trade, and LPs would uh, deposit um, the uh, t t t t token A here and or uh, t t token B and receive passive income off of that. Um, here's some more information just in general, uh, but here's an interesting uh, take that adds on to the involvement of hologenic um, with the XRPL AMMs. Um, so uh, this is uh, just explaining the tr tr trading pools. So tr tr trading pools increase the total XRP d d demand, uh, which means f fewer XRP are available f for sale, which increases the price of XRP. XRP to e U USD sell pressure, however, decreases the price of XRP. For that reason, it's important to have attractive trading pools so that the value won't, uh, quote, leak out of the XRPL. So you, you, you can't just pair it up against anything. Uh, it actually has to be a pair that people want to uh, be able to use in a trade um, in order to uh, receive a uh, certain t t t token paired up against XRP. Um, um, a a anything to anything is p p possible because all assets are paired to XRP for tr 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 trading. Uh, so here's an, an example that says the available USD supply increases when people have money to deposit into the exchanges where these tokens are actually held. The demand increases when people get excited about the utility when they need that and when they actually uh, speculate. So um, that uh, is an interesting thing that uh, relates to the uh, example for hologenic against XRP in an LP. And I believe that the sologenic uh, decentralized exchange is actually already um, working on preparing for uh, the XRPL AMM. But here is uh, some comments on um, how uh, Ripple is um, uh, set in terms of liquidity and um, why uh, it is important for something like an AMM that can um, even out the price of XRP and uh, as in my last video I made on how XRP and XLM can be considered oh, ST uh, stable coins, Whew. Um, this is uh, a very important point.
or like people are still not using cryptocurrencies for payments like let's be honest like that's where the product market fit is really good and they're not uh, there's a lot of volatility which i think is, is and i think we do think that like that's going to start to go away like the logic of economics says it has to like you can't really have a highly volatile asset just because this uh, volatility is a profit opportunity and so somebody should be turning that volatility into revenue we have massive pools of liquidity now like you know the trade volumes are enormous so i think i think we are set up for the next couple of years i think one one sign is like giants like bank of america you know jp morgan are starting to you have to be careful with them because they want to seem like they're on the forefront of technology but also they're very successful companies so like if they could push stop on technology they would you know like if you you know if you have one of the top five banks in the world you don't want anything to change you want the world to stay exactly the way it is and most of your hyping of technology is going to be defensive but if you look like their their client their customers are really recognizing the potential of these technologies and they're realizing that they are going to have to adopt them if they want to remain relevant you know there's so there's the story of you know apple eating the music industry sony could have made the ipod but apple did and i think nobody wants wants to be in the position that, you know, to have the technology industry eat finance, um, you know, none of the established companies want that to be happening. And I think Ripple through the XRP ledger is right at the nexus of that convergence of these DeFi technologies with institutional adoption and focusing on, you know, the specific problems that are necessary, like, like I said, like sanction screening and other other things that institutions are going to, they're going to have to have, they're going to have to have if they're going to be part of this ecosystem. Yeah.